today I'm going to be showing you a method I created for how to accurately track colour within a live video feed. We can see an example of it here where there are seven different elements tracking seven primary colours. That <coughs> uh, It's a very accurate way of tracking colour if you know what it is you're looking for. I specifically designed it to be run through a blob tracker afterwards. So it uses alpha channels to give us just either an on or off value for whatever color we're looking for. So to start off, I'm going to use the built-in Max library. Uh, so I'm just going to bring in a movie player. If you're unfamiliar where to get this, any uh, jit.qt or file should have something similar that will allow you to play files and for keeping it very simple I'm going to use the red ball movie that comes as standard with Max. So it's just a simple red ball that keeps playing over and over and over. Now before I can start tracking colour we need to we need to work out which colour it is we're actually wanting to track. So we're going to build a little system that will allow us to look at our live video feed and work out what the RGB value of our colour is. And then we will break that down and work out what sections of the video contain that colour through four simple steps. So to start off, I'm just going to bring in a P window. And what the P window will let me do is just visualise the video outside of its player. So simple one-to-one -one translation. It might not be scaled quite right but it doesn't matter for this example. And then we're going to use the special tool called the Sucker which can get pixels, pixel information from the display. Uh, so you can attach this on top of anything and get the, the RGB values that come out of it. So if we attach a... it's attached to the wrong one we attach a message box to the sucker, hover over top, and then if I click, you will see we're given a value that goes uh, a floating point between 1 and 0. For this, we're actually going to use pure original classic RGB values, so I'm going to go over to the inspector, into all, and I'm going to use output old style 0 to 255. Uh, and this flicks it from floating point into integer values, which is, is much more handy for what we're using. So now when I click it, you can see I now get 25500, so it's, it's pure red. Full red, zero green, zero blue. We're going to use, uh, we're going to put this value into a special uh, operator later that will set the black point of our video of our tracking software, but this will make more sense in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing we need to do now that we have this is we are going to add a... So I'm going to push in and then create a prepend which adds values before messages and I'm going to add val. So I'm going to take the output from our sucker into the prepend val. And now if I put a message into that and click, you'll see we're now getting val 255, 255, 255 because I clicked on a pure white spot. One final thing we're going to need to do is just to make it clear for when we are, we're working with our operator later, it's going to need a, an alpha channel as well, which currently it doesn't involve. So I'm going to add another prepend. Yeah, I'm actually going to add an append here. I'm going to add append zero. So prepend adds in front, append adds at the rear. going to have to prepend it again just to keep it clean and I'm going to prepend zero so take our sucker output add zero to the front and then add value to the front 
so it should read backwards RGB value 0 val and there you go so I can see it's value 0 which is our alpha channel 255 red 0 green 0 blue and we will leave that there for now and we'll move on to the actual tracking part of the software so all we're going to do is we're going to run our live video feed offset by this value here through a couple of operators and we're going to use jit.op to apply a unary operator to our single video and the one we're going to do is called ABS diff so absolute difference and what this is what this is going to do is it's going to adjust the absolute values of the colors inside the video to whatever we tell it to so jit.operator jit.op and then I'm going to type at op to say I'm going to tell it uh, define a different operator from default EBS diff and then at value and then leave it blank after that so now what this is expecting it's going to run the EBS, uh, ABS diff on the value we put into input 2 and the value we put into input 2 is going to be our color so if I show you it without so I'm going to create another jet.p window not playlist and if I run our live video feed into that you will see it'll just be a one-to-one -one translation but now if I put in our RGB value and bang it you will see that you will see that the color we're now wanting to track which is pure red in this case suddenly becomes the black value of this and the white value gets skewed because it's now it's changed the top end absolute value for what what white is as well in relation to this red value so now what we have is we have a set of a matrix that has values that are strange uh, that, that vary between 0 and 255 still on the RGB values but anywhere that is now red is now black so it has a value of 0 so we could run this through a blob tracker and it would still be able to find a black be as long as we've got this very clear cut red and white background but real videos aren't that, aren't that clean so we're going to run it through a few more operators to make it very simple so we make sure we only have e the colour we want through a threshold and nothing else. So next what we're going to do is another jit.op. We're going to do abs, uh, abs diff again at val but this time we're going to set a new default value of 255 and all we're going to do is we're going to tell we're going to invert these values here so suddenly our black value becomes our white value and our white value becomes our black value. So suddenly the image we've got looks almost an exact opposite of the original input video. So the color we're tracking is pure white and everything else will be of strange hue. It just so happens that white is now the, the original color so this video looks like a straight swap. <coughs> Again I could run this through a blob tracker now and it would be able to clearly follow this because these values are constant whereas everything else uh, can change around it. But to clean it up a bit, I'm going to put it through an RGB to Luma node. And all this is going to do is going to completely strip out all the RGB values, so there's no red, no green, no blue. And it's going to turn it into just one channel that's going to have uh, alpha and then uh, an, a 0 to 255 value for the grayscale. And suddenly, instead of a tracker having to work on three fields for RGB, we've turned it into one. So now it's either going to be on or off. The final step for this is we're going to gate it. So we're going to tell our program to only let two things that are white, so pure. In this case, will be it'll either be 255 or 0. And I, we use one final JIT to op but this time we're going to use greater or equals to at val we're going to set a new default which is 255 but we're also going to influence the output so we're going to, I'm going to put in 
uh, I'm going to click I for an integer. I'm going to run it through a special expression. XPR. 255. Take away dollar sign I1. So integer 1 that I'm going to plug into it. And then I'm going to put that to a second number just so we can uh, visualize it. So by default it's 255. And this is going to be our threshold counter. So the higher the threshold, so the higher the input box at the top here, the more the gate is going to allow through. So we can. So when we plug in this video here, and I drag this down so we can visualize it. Doesn't look like much has changed. I realize where my mistake is now. You need to actually include the operator to tell it we're changing the default. So now when I push return, and my threshold is way below zero, if we bring this up slowly, you can see it will slowly start to fade in and out the color. Now, to give you an example of what this actually looks like, I'm going to put it in a different check. I'm going to do cell checker. Uh, let me just scale this. Uh, what am I going to lose for this? Jet dot check uh, cell block. That's what we want. I'm going to make this much bigger. Let me bring back in the inspector. Let me turn down this column width to something like 30. That'll probably work. Uh, I do not suggest you use this in a normal use because this is scarily intensive on the processor. So now I've got an input going into my check cell. Let me bring this out of the way. Put this matrix into the check cell and suddenly we'll get a visualization of it. So they all say zero. Let's go into the path of the ball. There you go. So again, even even at this, because it's such a high resolution input movie, it's it's rendering nineteen twenty by ten eighty in a full square here. But you could see when the ball did pass through here, there you go, that was it passing through. It's either zero or two five five. That are the only values we can have. Uh, I'm just trying to. I don't think there's like a much cleaner way for me to to visualize it, unfortunately. So, especially with the lag it's going to give you and no matter how good your computer you will still suffer with check checks on a full full matrix like that so it was a very very def specific example but if we look at something like uh, oh where there's lots of different colors so we can click on blue here and just to make sure it updates I'm going to add a bang so every time that the sucker is clicked it bangs our message out to the uh, operator. So now when I click here, the color we're tracking for becomes the black level. We invert it so the color we're tracking becomes the white level. We turn it into it's only an R. Uh, we remove the RGB data and turn it into grayscale. And then all we do is we pass it through a filter so only the color we're tracking for gets through. And depending on the threshold, you can see the slightly darker corners here don't normally pass through until I adjust my threshold. So what actual use is this? Uh, having a very clear set of, you, going back to the matrix example, uh, let me just pause this and remake that. So you can see here, they're all zero on the far left hand side, but as we scroll through, suddenly we start to get to our values that are, these are actually 255, it's just because I've made the cell width so small we can't see the full data value. And at the top of the video here, that very thin black line is what that 000 represents there. So though there's two pixels at the top of the screen that are, uh, that are black. 
and that's the sort of level of detail you can use with this so I have a very 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 clear image of on a pixel level of what has the color I'm looking for and what doesn't going through this threshold now this is I used this so I knew exactly the colors I was looking for in a very controlled environment under a spotlight where the color didn't change but you can even with Saka in the example they give you can send it values so you can tell it where to search uh, so there is a lot of power in this later on after uh, after this section I passed it through a blob tracker which is a, a bit bit more complex than the actual color tracking system so we'll come back to that in a later tutorial but hopefully this gives you an idea of a, a good method for tracking color within Macs